We need to add interfaces to VLANs, and when we do, we have two options. We can configure access ports or trunk ports. Access ports are the interfaces that regular devices connect to. That includes workstations, printers, phones, and other devices like that. Trunk ports are most commonly used when we're connecting one switch to another switch. However, there are other cases where we might connect servers to trunk ports too. Let's start by configuring an access port. Under the interface, we set the switch port mode to access. We then configure the VLAN ID that we want this port to belong to. So now when we connect a device, all traffic entering or exiting this interface is part of that VLAN. To check which interfaces belong to which VLANs, enter the command show VLAN brief. Here we can see that interface gigabit 0 slash 1 belongs to VLAN 10, which is in the workstations VLAN. We usually think of an access port as belonging to only one VLAN. However, there is an exception. This is when we have a phone and a workstation connected to the same port. Usually, the physical phone will connect to the switch, and the workstation will connect to a port on the back of the phone. In a case like this, we will configure a VLAN for voice traffic. In this example, we will make it VLAN 40, and we'll give it the name Voice. Then we'll enter interface gig01 and configure it with an additional voice VLAN using the switch port voice VLAN command. When we run show VLAN brief again, we can see that the voice VLAN has been created, but it isn't showing up on that interface. I picked an interface that was down, unfortunately, so it's not showing here. So to check this one, we can run show interfaces gi0 slash 1 switch port. Here we can confirm that the voice VLAN is also configured on this port. Okay, let's go back to trunk ports. As I said earlier, these are commonly used when connecting two switches together. They're also used a lot when connecting to servers as most servers now have virtual switches inside them and virtual servers are connected to those virtual switches. We look at virtual servers and virtual switches a bit later in another section. Trunk ports are capable of carrying more than one VLAN at a time. They do this by adding a VLAN ID to each frame. There are two possible ways of doing this. The old way uses a protocol called ISL. This is out of date, so we're not going to look at that any further. The right way to do it these days is with an encapsulation standard called 802.1Q. This takes the Ethernet header in the frame and it adds in a small tag. This tag simply contains the VLAN ID. So if a switch needs to forward a frame from one switch to another, it will add this tag, and then the receiving switch will know which VLAN that frame belongs to. This process is often called tagging, and you can probably see why. In fact, while Cisco refers to it as a trunk port, many other vendors will call it a tagged port. It's really simple to configure a trunk port. Under the interface, we first need to select the type of encapsulation. This comes back to those two methods I spoke of earlier, ISL or 802.1Q. You'll notice the third option, negotiate. We'll talk about that soon. As I said, .1Q is the option we want to use now. Next, we simply set the switch port mode to trunk. We can get a bit of information with the show interface trunk command. Here we can see the encapsulation type as well as the VLANs that are allowed on this trunk link. By default, all VLANs are allowed as long as they have been defined on the switch. We can limit our trunk to certain VLANs if we want to. This is called VLAN pruning because we're pruning off the VLANs that we don't want to allow. Personally, I always set an allowed list of VLANs as a matter of best practice rather than leaving them all on. Now let's go back to that interface and then we'll use the switch port trunk allowed command to provide this list of allowed VLANs. I would like to issue a strong warning here. When we use this command, we will overwrite the existing list of VLANs that are allowed on this trunk interface with the list that we provide. Many people, including myself, have made this mistake and caused the network to go down. If we look at this interface again, 
we can now see that we've got an updated list of VLANs that are allowed. On occasion, some traffic will arrive at a trunk port with no VLAN tag. As you can imagine, we call this untagged traffic. There are a few cases where we might see this. For example, if a workstation is connected to a trunk port rather than an access port. Or when a cheap and nasty switch that doesn't understand VLANs is connected to a good switch. There's even some traffic that switches send to each other that's untagged. So you might be thinking, the receiving switch needs the tag to know which VLAN the traffic belongs to. So what happens when there is no tag? That's a good question, and one that has confused many people. But it's not as tricky as it sounds. On the trunk port, there is a special VLAN called the native VLAN. By default, VLAN 1 is the native VLAN. When untagged traffic arrives at a trunk port, it is assumed to be part of this native VLAN. So, by default, any untagged traffic will be part of VLAN 1. We can change the native VLAN to another VLAN if we want to. We just configure the interface with the switch port trunk native VLAN command and we give it a new VLAN ID. Notice that we're getting a few syslog messages reporting a native VLAN mismatch. This is because CDP, that is Cisco Discovery Protocol, has detected that the switch on the other end of the link still has VLAN 1 as its native VLAN. It's important that native VLANs match at both ends of the link. You'll even notice that Spanning Tree has blocked the link. We'll talk about that in two more videos time. If you need to verify the native VLAN on an interface, use the show interfaces switch port command. When we do this, we can see that the trunking native mode VLAN is set to 10. You can probably work out how to tell if an interface is a trunk by using the Mac table alone. Can you see how it's done?